The Gunk was released on December 16th on Xbox Game Pass, with versions for Xbox consoles and PCs. It's a sort of adventure platforming game with puzzles, combat, and a compelling mystery to unravel. Developed by Image and Form, the makers of the acclaimed SteamWorld series, it's safe to say that there's a strong artistic pedigree here. But this is a detailed 3D game with a large world, very much unlike their prior games. So how well do the visuals hold up on Xbox Series S and X? And has the relatively small production size compromised the final product? The Gunk tells the story of two cash-strapped planet scavengers who land on a mysterious planet. There they encounter the Gunk, a tar-like substance that is damaging local flora. The game is driven by the radio communications between yourself and your teammate as you delve deeper and deeper into the planet, trying to unravel its mysteries. It's a slightly heady concept, but the game is anchored by a clear narrative and linear game design. The Gunk is an immersive mix of exploration, platforming, and puzzle solving which have been capably combined to provide just enough difficulty to keep things interesting as you uncover the world. The main character is armed with a sort of sci-fi vacuum cleaner, which she uses to clear the gunk, dispatch various enemies, and interact with the environment. It's somewhat reminiscent of Luigi's Mansion, and the vacuuming gameplay itself is well implemented. Keeping players engaged in the experience was clearly a big priority. To that end, the gunk has a minimalist UI that is rarely seen. Players can't rely on highlighting or waypoints, so the exploration and puzzle solving feels very natural. The game's soundtrack really draws you into the world as well, striking a perfect balance between being intriguing and being haunting. The visuals on display here really make that world worth exploring. It's a refined and charming Unreal Engine 4 title with a coherent and attractive aesthetic. The planet you land on is colorful and vibrant, with a very naturalistic feel. Caves, Jungles and ruins are all convincingly realized here, and feel foreign yet familiar. Some of the artwork and level designs are really quite beautiful. There's some great physically based materials here, as well as good global illumination. Volumetric lighting also makes a strong appearance and gives outdoor areas a hazy, mysterious look. The assets have a hand sculpted appearance and share a consistent visual identity with a low density, rounded style. Texture quality and polygon counts often don't hold up to scrutiny at a close distance, but the overall visual impression is strong. The game's cave areas serve as an equally compelling showcase for the visual design. The gunk isn't afraid to put you in some very dark areas, lit by sharp points of light or by the player's headlamp, which itself casts shadows. Light bounces beautifully through these spaces as you traverse them. These visuals are coupled with very effective temporal anti-aliasing that leaves the game more or less free of any shimmer. Although this does come with some softness, any temporal artifacts are covered up by very effective camera and object motion blur. Although some players will probably find the camera blur a bit on the strong side and there's no setting to turn it down or turn it off. Finally, there's the gunk itself. It's depicted appropriately with a tar-like surface undergoing constant undulation. It looks good at a distance and has some nice fluid animation when you vacuum it up. Up close, the texturing looks a little bit basic, however. There's also some inconsistencies with the way it's lit relative to the environment, with a strong specular glow that seems to come out of nowhere in some scenes. The gunk leaves a great visual impression, particularly for a game reportedly developed by a team of just 25 people. But there are some issues here as well. Shadow maps, for instance, are quite low resolution and feature distracting breakup in motion. Foliage animations update at half rate or 30 hertz, which can be distracting as well. Some effects, like the distortion effect that the vacuum makes, don't blend in and out properly and so appear to instantly disappear and appear as you depress the right trigger, which is a minor visual annoyance as well. Some will have a bit of a sticking point with the level construction, which while somewhat open is a little bit old school. Each area, even smaller areas, are preceded by short loading screens. It makes the game feel a little bit less contiguous than you'd expect, particularly in a game like this with a heavy focus on exploration. Texture pop-in is also a bit of an issue for a short period after loading into one of those areas. Character animation is also a bit of a sore spot at times. 
the designs themselves are attractive enough, with a cartoony, gnome-like main cast. Facial animation is lacking, however, with simple lip-sync and robotic expressions. Cutscenes are rather stiff as a result, a state of affairs that the developers seem keenly aware of, as the camera tends to be zoomed out quite far in cinematics. Lastly, as stated before, the game has some issues with asset quality up close. The gunk is only a 10GB download, and is a cross-gen game developed by a small team, so these issues are completely understandable. Still, the models and textures here can look a bit raw when the camera is near. Despite these minor issues, the gunk is a visually compelling title. The consistency of the presentation and strength of the artwork really stands out here. Characteristics that are sometimes in short supply in indie titles. It's a graphically alluring and evocative title that is more than the sum of its parts, and is well worth experiencing. But that's enough about the core visuals. We've got two current gen platforms here, Xbox Series S and Series X. So how do they stack up? Let's start with pixel counts. Series X has a dynamic resolution setup, ranging between 1296p and native 4K, although it seems to render around 1584p most of the time. The actual final resolve looks a fair bit better than those numbers suggest, however, with an appropriately detailed and clean resolve on a 4K set. I was honestly a bit surprised by the Series S resolution readouts. We're mostly in sub-1080p territory here, with a dynamic res setup that spans all the way from 864p to 1440p. Resolutions around 936p are quite common here. It does hold up somewhat better than a typical sub-1080p Series S game, though. On both consoles, it's possible that resolution ranges could be a bit wider than this, of course, but that's what my pixel counts turned up in a variety of scenes. That's not the only visual difference between the two systems, however. Shadow quality is quite similar between the two consoles, but shadow draw distance is pulled in quite a bit on Xbox Series S. In this scene, shadows draw invisibly in the midfield as you move forward on Series S, while Series X has just the barest hint of shadow draw much further afield from the player. It's mildly distracting on Series S, but isn't a huge impediment to the visuals. Draw distances for scene geometry and foliage are pushed out to the point of being unnoticeable on both systems, so this is really the only appreciable bit of temporal instability on display. Series X performance is very strong. It's a locked 60 FPS throughout, with just the briefest of exceptions. Positioning the camera near an explosion can see the game drop one or two frames. There are also some one-off duplicate frames on a very occasional basis. Most players will likely never notice this, of course, and the game looks beautifully smooth 99.9% .9 of the time. The camera motion blur adds quite a lot to the sense of consistency here, and makes the 60Hz update feel smoother than it would otherwise. Series S is more interesting, and not really in a good way. General gameplay still holds to the 60fps target, but getting up close to the gunk tends to cut frame rate down to the 50s for extended periods. Vacuuming up gunk and dealing with enemies feels somewhat compromised as a result, with an inconsistent visual response and noticeable stutter on a conventional display. Cutscenes also tend to have some issues, with frame rates often hovering in the 50s and dipping to lows around 40 FPS. The aforementioned explosions can see frame rate dive even lower, but those are rare outliers. It's a bit of a shame, especially considering the consistency of the output on Series X. VRR, as always, more or less fixes the problem if you have a display that can support it, but users without the appropriate displays will experience a game that has a jerky, noticeably degraded output in its most action-heavy scenes. The Gunk is a title that surprised me. The amount of polish and care that have gone into the visuals here really impresses. The world feels beautifully realized, and no individual aspect of the presentation feels like an outlier. Lighting, assets, and post-processing all come together to produce a rich and even world. This level of quality and consistency is usually absent from a lower budget title, but image and form have put together a visually mature effort with only relatively minor graphical issues. Performance falls a bit short of the mark on Series S, unfortunately. The Gunk is yet another title on Series S that fails to reach the frame time consistency of its more capable sibling. 
Series X delivers a smooth showing with dips only in very rare circumstances, but Series S needs some additional work. But with that, we've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for notifications for new videos. To view a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch, just use Twitter. That's all for me for now. Thanks for watching.